And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am very proud to announce a really legend here in the room. He is, uh, yeah, kind of, um, he can tell a lot what he learned by investing in 86 startups, for example. Um, people say that he is like the papa of Israelic startup boom. He is called Mr. Tech. Some others call him Mr. List. So he has different titles but he only has one name. And I hope that he's already in the room. Is he? Yes, of course, he's waving, that's excellent. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on stage, Yossi Vardi. Welcome on stage, thank you very much. And I have one thank question, you. Nice to be here. because I saw one thing that you did with Steffi in New York. You motivated people. We can people. have everything done in New York, stay in New York. Okay, <laughs> great. So you just watch the video, it's your stage. <laughs> should I wait for the video or should I start? No, no, the video was only, I saw the video and I wanted to talk oh, that see. you do things what were in the video, but we say we st stay in New York, so we leave it there. No, you can show the video. No, we are, don't have it. Ah, okay. I just watched it by repairing with you and then I said it was excellent, it was very entertaining, but no video, just stop okay, talking. Okay, can I see it? Please, <laughs> it's your stage. Great, you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good, so first of all, it's very nice to be again in Munich, especially in the Buddha offices. And uh, I was asked to share with you my, my experience from investing in 86 companies. This is a little bit misleading title because out of the 86 companies, 30 went bust, <laughs> evaporated, were not left, zero, nada, garnished. I don't know how you say it in German. Like. Kaput. Kaput, yeah. Kaput is a good name. <laughs> so I lost 30 companies. I was able to be part of selling another 32 companies, and I still have some 26 companies. Some of them will die. A few of them will do very well, and most of them will continue to be zombies. You know what is a zombie startup? It's a startup which doesn't go here, doesn't go there, and the entrepreneurs are so committed and so attached, so they don't let it, don't let it go. And uh, maybe rule number one is that you have to be willing to know when you should part from the startup, because for the investors, for I'm an angel investor, what they call, for investors, it's very easy. I invest in 86 companies. At any given time, I have 30, 40 companies in my portfolio. If one is closed, you know, it's not uh, very happy, but it's not a big disaster. In three or four months, I will do an exit, which will cover for the one which lost. For the entrepreneurs, it's totally different game. He is betting two, three, four, five of the most expensive things and the most perishable things that he has, and this is his years of his life. And you lost a year, you will never be able to, to make up. So you have to remember, love is blind. This is true for loving the other sex, but it's definitely even more true loving your startups. So don't get too emotional. You have to be emotional, you have to be passionate. If you're not passionate, you will not do a great job, but you have to know when to stop. So 32 exit, 30 close. This is my balance. I made a lot of mistakes. I made also a few right things. I will uh, share with you. Rule, rule number two. Don't listen to my advices. Whatever I'm going to tell you <laughs> is worth nothing. You, you have to develop your own, your own experience. People don't learn from other people's experience. When 
you see somebody fall, you don't feel the pain. Usually you laugh at him. So you have to experience. So rule number three, if you want to get an experience, you have to jump into the water. You cannot just get the experience by staying aside. People are coming to me, they tell me I have an idea. What do you think about the idea? So I will tell you rule number four about uh, making judgment of, on ideas, but this is what I tell always the young people which are asking me, if you want to know if your idea is good or not, you should go and uh, like Nike say, what Nike says? Just give it. One, two, three. Just do it. Are you sick? <laughs> One, two, three. Just do it. A little bit better. Let's try. One, two, three. Just do it. Okay, so this is the most important rule. Go, go and do it and be ready that you will be fall on your nose. This is part of the experience. If you don't want to risk that you will fall on your nose, don't go to be an entrepreneur, go and work in a bank or in the post office. The maximum which will happen to you in the post office is that a box will fall on your <laughs> head. But, uh, but if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to be ready to fail. And uh, in many countries, failing is a big shame. It's embarrassment, etc. The countries which succeed in startups developed an attitude towards failure. It's not a big honor to fail, I have to tell you that. I, I've done it 30, 30 times. Uh, but, but you have to get used to it and you have to understand that this is part of the game. For me, failing is not failure. This is part of the cost of do, doing business. If you want to have an exit, or to sell a company, or to build a company which will grow very fast, the price of it is the risk of failing. You have to know how to, how to take it. And uh, you know what uh, President Truman, Truman said, if you can't stand the heat, don't go to the kitchen. So if you want to be in the kitchen, you have to, to, to be able to, to take the heat. I say I spoke a little bit about ideas. Can anybody ask me, Yossi, what are you looking for when you are examining investment? Anybody had an idea for smart question? Nobody? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody has an idea for smart question. Go ahead. What is the absolute red flag? No, you should you should re, you should ask me what are you looking for when you look for investment. <laughs> yes, please go ahead. Please tell us what are you looking for in investment. That's great. You even have done it with a little bit of drama. <laughs> That's great. I like it. Very clever question. <laughs> so I tell you what I don't look. I don't look for idea. Ideas I used to in the beginning of my career and in, in investing. I thought. Ideas are overrated. Now I know that idea doesn't count. What count? What count? People. Okay. What count is the execution? And for right execution, you need what you said, you need people. So I don't look about the ideas, I look on the people, I will tell you what I'm looking when I'm looking for people. Number one, number one is talent. Number one plus, before number one, ahead of number one is the virtue of the people. You, you, from my experience, the behavior of the people, their ability to collaborate, their nature, their virtues, is the most important thing. You know, because there are some people which are very talented, but they belong to the kind of people which have a problem for every solution. <laughs> and you want to stay away from these people. You need to build a team, you need to build a team of talented people, talent, 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 and talent, and people which will collaborate with, with uh, each other. And now I want to talk about another very, very important 
part of the whole startup ecosystem, and this is part which is less visible, and this is the ability of people to work together. Startup is a small company. It's less than critical mass. You, know, you, you start with three people, and you try to compete with a company which have 500 people, or 5,000, or 50,000, or 500,000. You cannot ever, you never can possess all the talents and all the elements of knowledge and all the connections that you need. So you always have to count on friends and people which will go together with you. I'm asked many times what is the secret for the success of the Israeli startup ecosystem. This belongs to a totally different uh, talk. But I can tell you one thing, that Israel is a country with one degree of separation. We are eight and a half million people, all of us. We have two common things to all of us. One, all of us are paranoid. <laughs> and number two, all of us feel guilt feelings. And when you have a society which, be, which is driven by these two elements, you get some fantastic some fantastic results. So because of the paranoia and the guilt feeling, we tend to help even the people we don't like. In Israel, everything, because it's such a small country, everything is in, the, the American use the word incestuous, that's the word. Everything is incestuous. Everybody knows everybody, everybody likes everybody, everybody hates everybody, and it's all simultaneously. So when somebody comes to me, and ask me that I will help him, I cannot just tell him go away. I have to go and at least do something to show that, that uh, I'm helping you. So building this social glue is very important. The number one important asset in this industry, and it's also in uh, many Many other industries, they told me that I will have some indication how much time I have, because usually, where it is? Eight minutes. Eight minutes, okay. I will try to finish it eight minutes. You know, I was invited to Toronto two years ago to a Q&A session. So the guy who interviewed me asked me a question. I gave, this is true story, I gave an answer which took one hour and 42 <laughs> minutes and the event was, uh, was over. So I have to watch the time because otherwise I don't know what will happen to the guy uh, after me. I want to talk about what is the most important asset for a startup. Speed. Guys, are you sleeping? Speed. Pardon? Speed. What did you say? Speed. Speed. Speed, Speed. okay. <laughs> Any other uh, suggestions? Resilience. Resilience. Customers. Ca customer, I have to tell you something about customer. You know, I'm in business <laughs> since 1969. <laughs> and I came to the conclusion that life could be wonderful if you didn't need customers, employees, and working capital. You know, customers are nuisance, but you cannot live, uh, you cannot live without them. That's, that's true. The most important asset is what I call social capital. I want you to think about this thing. The one thing you have to walk away from this talk uh, with is the idea of social capital. Everybody of you is very, very careful about his financial capital. If you will get a note of five euro, you take it out of the pocket and the wind take it away, you are not going to stand like this and watch. You are going to run after the note. And if it goes to the street where cars are coming, you will jump between the cars. And this is what you will do for your five five euro, but most of the people don't manage their social capital in the right way. Social capital is the relations you have with other people. How many people will be willing to answer your email? How many people will be willing to do an introduction for you? How many people will be willing to come to an event you are doing? 
Social capital is the most important thing. People which have great social capital, they have many doors open to them, and social capital has to be managed. You cannot just sit on the chair and think that God will throw social capital on, on you. How many people collected business cards today? Can you raise the, your hand? All of you collected business cards. Now you, please, raise your hand. Right. What are you doing with your business uh, cards? Uh, look them up and then call them. Look them up and then call them. And then where, where do you put them? How do you find them back? Uh, in my social network. In the, where? LinkedIn. You put them in LinkedIn. Okay. What do you do with your... Now, now the truth, you know, don't... Uh, tell me the truth. What percentage of your business card you put in uh, LinkedIn? From all the business cards you collected? 50. 50? I doubt. <laughs> not that I'm saying you are not telling the truth, but... Uh, <laughs> But I have done this exercise too many times. Most of the people treat their social capital like revolving door. It comes from the one end, you go to the meeting, you collect the business card, then you put it on your, ta on your table and you look at it, and the business card look at you back, <laughs> and you look at it and this look at you back, and then you cover it with another new business cards, and the old one are just staying there and a connection business card you don't get it by mail you don't get it in the po in the in the post box you have to shake hand with somebody to speak with him for two minutes or one minute or five minutes or one hour and give you the business cards so business cards is a proxy to the social capital I tell you what I do with them I open an Excel and I put seven things of the business card in the Excel. I put the first name, last name, title, organization, how I got the business card, this is very important, email and city. If I have time, I also put uh, what, what, uh, what is the interest, you know, if the guy is in uh, mobility or food or whatever. I do it since the age of 20. Eight. Now I'm 74, and you can make the integral if you do good in the mathematics. <laughs> I'm 74? No, I'm already 75. <laughs> you know, one year less and one year more. No, in my age, one year less and one year more, one year more it's very significant. <laughs> uh, so, nourish your social capital, be active, go to meetings, go to conference, arrange a meeting, time is over. No. No, I still have 2 minutes and 52 seconds. Let me go to the other things. Other things which I learned in my 86 mixed results investment. What is the optimal number for founders in a startup? What maximizes your chance to success? Three. 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 Five. Three. Five. Who thinks it's five? Raise your hand. Who thinks it's four? Raise your hand. Who thinks it's three? Raise your hand. Who thinks it's two? Raise your hand. Who thinks it's one? Raise your hand. Who thinks it's over five? Raise your hand. Okay, uh, you, la you want to have orgy. You don't want to have startup. <laughs> uh, the, the right number is three. And the consideration I follow. The more you have, the stronger you have as a, as a team. But the more you have, the interest of each one goes down, and to manage it, it's becoming more difficult. So optimal, and I will tell you where you can learn about it more. Three founders, one for business, one for product, one for technology. Anybody who is interested to see what are the parameters should go to a site which is called Startup Genome or Compass. They research maybe 10,000 startups and they give a lot of data about the probability of what succeeds and what doesn't succeed. What is the number, the optimal number of pivoting a company which will increase your, which most of the successful companies are doing? Anybody know what is pivoting? 
Nobody knows what is pivoting. The orgy guy, go ahead. Uh, changing your direction after noticing that the first approach doesn't fully hit it. Right, right. He said changing your direction. I will rephrase it. At one point of the life of the companies, the investors come to you and tell you, you go nowhere, we are going to send you home. And then you say, no, no, wait, wait a minute, I have a whole new strategy. This is called pivoting. <laughs> now, the optimal number, what do you think is the number of, uh, optimal number of people? How many times startup? Anybody here is an entrepreneur who is running his own startup? Raise your hand. Okay, anybody is working in startup, raise your hand. Anybody want to work in startup, raise your hand. All the people who didn't raise your, their hand, raise your hand. <laughs> so what are you doing here? If you're not, you're not running a startup, you don't work in startup, and you don't want to be in startup, you don't have anything better to do on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> I have to finish. <laughs> you look at me in a very threatening... Uh... <laughs> can I join you for some questions? You can Are you sure. All right, I'm sad, and you can sit, relax. How long I can sit here? I enjoy myself. Two more minutes. <laughs> I tell jokes and people are laughing. I know. Life is wonderful. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what Steffi Journey called in New York. Now I can tell. It's the Yossi mode. Please, a big applause for the Yossi mode. And Yossi should go. This was the video about the, the, the Yossi mode I like a lot. I didn't tell them that the optimal number of, uh, of pivoting. Okay. Wait just a minute. What is a pivot? I have no idea. <laughs> so you see, ah, hi. Can you tell them what is a pivot? <laughs> Turn around business. No, tell them. <laughs> So just turn around the business in a new direction, new strategy, as you said, especially if you don't want to sell your company, yeah. if your VC wants to sell it. And if, they invest, and if the investors like you are about to kick your ass, you know, so then it's a good time to do pivot. The optimal number for pivot is one. Companies which do not pivot, do, do no pivot, it means that the management didn't learn anything. Companies which are doing too many pivots are zigzagging and wasting the investors' money. At the time, go to Startup Genome and learn about pivoting. Let me ask one last question. Exactly. I, I don't ask, they don't ask, you ask the question. I learned. What is, <laughs> what is better when you raise funds in the beginning? To raise less money than you need or more money than you need? More. 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 Who said more? Raise your hand. Who said less? Raise your hand. About 5% say the more, 10% say less, and 85% sitting and asking themselves, what this idiot want from our life? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it, look, you, you and I have so many stretches on our back, so we know the answer. The answer is, it's better to raise less money than more money. Lot of money in the early stage of life is poisoning. It's like taking too much drug or drinking too much concentrate of, of, of juice. If you take too much money, you tend, you have the, what we call in the industry the money bladder, and you have the pressure to pee the money away, you increase your burning rate, you hire too many people, you don't want to fire them because many of them learned in, with you in the high school, etc and you are going to, uh, to a loop that you will have to go and raise more money, more money, more money, you will be diluted. Start with the minimum money you need, and after you show a proof of concept, after you have something to show, go and raise the money, yes. Yo, uh, oh, not yes, but uh, the time is over, Yossi. I'm so sad now. Is it, is don't, it... don't, don't be too sad, you will recover, it's okay. okay. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Yossi Vardy. It was entertaining, excellent, thank you very much. See you next week and next year. And have fun on the DRD. Thank you very much.